All right, we're continuing the Baal Shem Tov for the truth of the hostage, the, the, all the innocent in Israel and uh, innocent Palestinians and uh, in the suit of, in the merit of, um, and, and they should protect the soldiers and for the healing of all those who need healing. So the Baal Shem Tov says, number 70, very powerful. Dvekus, you know what Dvekus means, especially Dvekus when you pray. Dvekus means that when saying a word, you prolong that word extensively. By virtue of Dvekus, you do not want to let go of that word and therefore draw it out. So he brings in the notes uh, here from the Kester Shem Tov, also from the Mal Shem Tov. He says, when praying, place your whole thought into the power of the word. You articulate until, place your whole thought into the word, the power of the words you articulate, until you perceive how the divine lights in the words become enkin enkindled, enlightened, enkind enkindled, I don't know how to say it, from one another. Meaning there's energy in every word, especially when you pray in Hebrew, Lashon HaKodesh. It can be also in regular word, but especially in Hebrew. And thus it's generating various lights. This energy that comes out of your mouth. When you speak, it's a combination of brain and heart, hopefully. And the vibration, all that, this energy in there. And if you connect to the words, you connect right, part of your neshama, of your emotion energy, it's in there and there are lights coming out with what that word means and you're able to connect to it, to its energy. The lights of the letters are chambers of God into which he draws his emanations in the spheres. The concentration of the words, therefore, leads to unity with their inherent div divinity, a, st a state of vicus, attachment and cleaving unto God that one does not want to let it go of. Meaning that when we say the words, we realize the words, let's say, Ahava. When I say Ahava, I have to imagine every letter is like, a vessel for light so and the words so it's like each letter or each word correspond to a sphere as so then the combination of all the lights create an energy it's like chemical reaction i put some oxygen with hydrogen and now it's h2o it becomes water same thing every letter it's a mixing of different spiritual powers that when combined brings a certain light that enables the word for Ahava to bring more love in the world or to feel more love. So when you realize that each, when you speak and pray that these words have those energies, you start, like, you love it. It's like you want to stay with that word, with energy, you want to feel that word. When I say Ahava, or when we say, for example, when we say Shema, it's a great time to do it. Say Shema, right, and or Echad. Where we prolong the Echad, we try to connect to the energy of the word one, the word for unity, the word that is seven gematria as love, and that we want to be one with, with God, with that. So that's that's what it means to achieve Vekus when saying the words. We we almost don't want to let go of that word because we feel the energy, we feel the the power and the beauty in it. We feel Hashem in it, so to speak. It's like someone who says, I love you, and you just want to keep those words in your mind, in your heart forever. I remember the first time you told me, I love you. Like when we tell people, I remember the words you say. So like people stay attached to certain words. Someone says something, you know, a quote, and they say, I remember 20 years ago, a smart, wise man, you know, told me this. 
and you got attached to the word. You didn't want to let go of those words. So that's the same concept um, that we're talking here. It's, I, I believe so. <laughs> Says the, se the Baal Shem Tov. Number 71. Another idea to learn. If you have an alien thought when praying, Klippa is riding on your utterances. And is the, the husk, uh, forces of evil that is trying to attach yourself to what you're saying. Heaven forbid. For though thought rides upon the words of speech. As, so it's like you have the, the horse is the words and then the one on the horse is the thought. This is the meaning of my love. Oh, okay, so so fine. Uh, exactly what he says. He, this is the meaning of my love. Um, where well, I compare you to a horse in the chariot of Pharaoh. In the Song of Song. So, the words and letters of prayer are compared to horses. They are the vehicle subservient to and guided by the rider, taking him to places he is unable to reach on his own. So our, our thoughts are able to bring our words and in, in un, very unique places. The man is directing the horse. This is what you have to think when you're riding a horses when you're davening. Where do you want to bring, where do you want to go? What, wherever you think, that's where your words are going to go. So words are referred to as horses. Okay. When Pharaoh, the alien thought, rides upon them, then my love, the mitich, it is better to be silent. So if I have bad thoughts coming all of a sudden, I don't want to continue speaking my words. I start thinking bad about someone, God forbid, or no, impure thoughts. Stop, stop happening, stop, don't say anything because those thoughts are going to use your, the, the power of the words to go in place you don't want, to bring those words in a clipper, in a negative place. So you don't want, you don't want to do that. It's better to stay silent. And wait till your thoughts go away and then you can go ride your horse again, your words of prayer, and bring them the right place. On the other hand, that's why it says it's dangerous just to, to pray, meaning not all of your prayers go up. Sometimes your prayer gets stuck or go down in the clippers and you don't get answered. On the other hand, words that come from the heart enter the heart, they enter the heart of above by means of the breath as is well known. Um, so, there's nothing more powerful than an emotional prayer. Is something called heart above, so to speak. And the breath, so to say, the, it explain, explains here, based on the Zohar, breath comes from exhaling, of which the Zohar states that he who exhales, exhales from within himself from his inwardness, his innermost vital vi vitality. Words that ascend are those which are formed by the exhalation, exhalation rooted in the very core of man's heart, uttered with kavanah and fervor. fervor. Um, okay. And one more. Something, uh, so number 72, sometimes when you feel that you are unable to pray, do not believe that you are definitely unable to pray that day. Strengthen yourself all the more and the awe of God will come upon you ever more. So we, 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 we need to be in awe in order to pray. We need to feel there's something powerful happening. We need to feel that 
you know, because most of the time we feel, who am I? Like, I'm so low, how can I pray? So we have to go out of our way to strengthen ourselves. And even if you don't feel what you do, you strengthen yourself. You try to find a way to um, motivate yourself and find, you know what? I'm just going to say one tailing or just the morning brachos or one little blessing, something to motivate. And you see that once you have done that, or just think for five minutes about God and His greatness and meditation. And then we'll see. Do something. Don't do nothing. Do something as, 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 as an effort that you know, I'm trying something to want to speak to your God. So I'm right now, I'm just, I don't feel connected. And this will give you actually sometimes the ability to really to have more awe and pray to God. This is comparable to a king who sets out to wage war and disguise, disguises himself. Those who are wise recognize him by his mannerisms. Those who are less wise recognize the king by noting the place with extraordinary guarding. Surely that is the place of the king. So, Thus, it is when you are unable to pray with Kavana, you must know that there is additional guarding all around the king. The king is there, but you are unable to approach him because of the special protection surrounding him. That's why like, you might not be excited to pray. Thus, fortify yourself with all great strength and additional Kavana. I am worthy. Hashem wants me to pray. I can make a difference. My prayer matters. And you boost yourself so that you will be able to come close and pray before God. You will then be able to pray with exceeding kavana. I mean, if you do that, not only you're going to feel like you want to pray, but you're going to be actually very connected. You'll have overcome a barrier, an, an illusion or the, or the surrounding protection. And you, and, and you will have pray more than if you just started a normal prayer without this tension. Bezat Hashem, we have to understand prayer is our main strength. Most of the Baal Shem Tov teaching on Kabbalah, on, on most of his Hasidus, is all about prayer. Prayer is our most powerful weapon. It is what helps us connect the most. You want to be happy. You want to love Judaism. You want to feel a connection with God learn how to pray learn how to pray this is the key it's like saying you want to have a good relationship with your wife you want to be or to your husband you want a good connection to your spouse you want to have you know you want to love each other more you want to feel each other learn to communicate properly know what to say when to say why not to say be have the guts to say it. It's communication. So same with Hashem. May we all be able to enhance our tefillot so that Hashem hears our tefillot. And all this is for Hashem because we love Hashem and want Him to be here. It's all for Him so that we can be in love with Him and nothing else matter. That's really what we want. All for Hashem. The greatness of His name. Because Hashem is all love, says the Rishis Chachma. This is what we all want at the end. We all want love. We need to feel love in our prayers. Feel that love. God loves us. I know it's hard when there's a lot of suffering. But He loves us. And that we are worthy of being loved. And we love Him. Baruch Adonai Lolam. Amen ve Amen.